I'd like to begin on a note of gratitude to Jin Yang and the team at Stony Brook University for coming up with this alternative way of bringing the poetry of uh, the five women poets who were supposed to have featured at the festival on the premise, uh, like so many other things. Um, our festival was cancelled, but I think uh, it was the quick thinking of uh, Jin Yang that has come up with an alternative um, to bring the poetry to you. Uh, I am Usha Akela, the founder of Matwala. We've had five successful festivals so far. Our basic mission is to bring South Asian poetry uh, to the mainstream, to increase the visibility uh, of South Asian diaspora poets in the country. So we're absolutely thrilled um, that this is happening uh, via Stony Brook University and hopefully you will enjoy uh, the poets, uh, their vision, uh, their thoughts on writing and uh, the poetry in these five videos. Thank you. Caved, 7.8 billion. It's a poem in five short parts um, and it's a response to the times we're in now. One. This one looks like a planet of red windmills whirring or a field of poppies, a wild corona of a star, heart of sunflower. This pretty thing is fanged arsenal in death stockpile. Small unseen things are perfectly precise. Hanuman burnt the city of Lankadas, eroding pride. Two. Where do we send our unclaimed sorrow, the unlabeled debris of life, the racking cough of unprocessed wounds? There is no island to send them off, be done, be free, like those lines of caskets in dirt in Heart Island, where New York City is belching unclaimed bodies, its gut overflowing. Three. The bush is bursting with red berries. Spring has slipped through the crevices, breathing green on the city. A musician plays his oud to the sky in himself. The trees are gravestones to the forgotten dead. The deer conglomerate, driven to community. More families staked by windows notice the heartbeat of nature. Four. The camera has vertigo, its crazy arc leering on the hoarded splendor of one family. What madness was this to record and pridefully share? Lines of bottles on the kitchen cabinetry, riddled with oil of bright urine hue, toilet rolls, bounties, tissues, food cans, a pantry full of debris for doomsday. This raid of the innards of stores, this back to basics, to Freud's eid of fear and self first. Five, the mind is like an abacus now, computing deaths on the Excel sheet of consciousness. From the Spanish flu, 20 to 50 million. From the Black Plague, 50 million. From COVID. What black hole continues to gorge up souls? Or is it an empyrean of hopeful light? What joust happens in the universe's annals? Between what forces this unending play into and out of life? Where is that mighty being who once gave the song of life to a tremulous warrior's heart in the middle of battle? Each of us is a naive question, as we have always been, curved like an embryo, full stopped by death. Reading a poem called Enough, it's a political poem. People, let us say it, bring back our caged children to a field of sunflowers. Open our land to people as we would our palms to catch a raindrop. Bring back Aelin in blue shorts, washed up as a fish, snuggled in sand. Let us not say again he did not make it. Let children not have to tell their stories. Let us bring back Gulsoma, seven years old, oil her back scarred like a cluster of sardines. 
Let us hear her laughter before it was married. Let Malala not be shot in the head. Let Karla not have to say 43,200 times raped. And bring back Asifa Banu's rosy cheeks and chirping. Let her bring back goats barefooted and roast warm chestnuts on a humble fire. Let her eight-year-old legs not be parted brutally for things other than what children do. And bring back all the murdered girl infants, still as stone swaddled in earth. And the police, mothers, fathers, sisters and brothers who kill, sell, abuse, rape, shoot their own. Let us hang them as decaying fruit from trees. And people, we who know too much with our tentacles of knowing, like octopuses with many eyes, how much of knowing do we need before we say it? We'll be reading two poems dealing with women's issues. This poem, Ka Ba Ak, references Egyptian mythology. I used a foreign mythology to convey the sense of alienation from my own being. I wanted lakes to drink from, and they took the moisture from my body. She breathes, they said, and prepared me for burial. Took my mind delicately through my nostrils. I was light as a leaf. I made no sound. Leave the heart, he said. She must feel this pain. And all around me, joy and laughter in jars, watching like falcons and jackals. They took my eyes and gave me coal, took my hands and gave wings coated with wax, took my feet, I grew claws, took my womb, gave me myrrh, and the linen they wound and wound, and the days they wound and the hours of my life, and my desires they wound, and I lay there without a sound. You need not be Egyptian, they said, Woman is enough to be wound. They carved out my vagina and stacked pyramids on me. And my daughter wailed, Mummy, Mummy, Mummy. And the sand blew about and blew about. They called the sand civilization. When I was white stripes and dunked in resin and magical chants. When I was anything but woman, they said, go elsewhere. Even life here is not enough. You are not yet judged plying me with virtue and riches to hand over to the gods. Caw, caw, I flew black, beady-eyed bird. The gods then raped me one by one with conundrums. We realize that there are many feminisms particular to each cultural identity. In this poem, I acknowledge the Western canon of feminist poetry to a particular woman poet, uh, Sylvia Plath, and articulate my separate identity from it as well, stressing that the Western canon is not the only literary standard to adhere to. The poem is called They Cannot Persist in the Sunlit Room. It's the title of one of Sylvia Plath's poems. Suddenly I know I am not Sylvia. I persist in the dark foliage of life and if not snow, blood on snow, I live. My pages are not mausoleums or Ouija boards, walking tours among tombstones where spirits moan, every poem a medallion of madness. I live inside another compass, not words of flint, steel, iron, the soul's vomit, sentence veins with poison blood, fidget stanzas, hackered rhyme, Poem whirl, poem numb, hyphenated madness. Never will I create a dark sky glittered with cancerous constellations. This I gladly confess like syllables stressed as in I know I am not Sylvia. Even though I dipped my nib in the dark ink of her well and know the magic of incantation, for the repetition of blue-throated names runs in my blue veins and use the odd metaphor. I am not Sylvia when I use my pen. I've been a woman sobbing on my bathroom floor. 
I've seen the soul shine ebb and die. I've hoped on many days I could quietly fly and my mind's buzzed with a swarm of bees, a chromosomatic mess. I've been a hanging woman from a noose of an ancient culture daily demeaned and the voices like a flock of vultures. I'll tell you an open secret. Women pluck other women's bones clean. Still, I am not Sylvia. I've walked to the edge of a river in my mind many times, filled my pockets with stone-heavy poems, and the river returned my face as Medusa, and the dark waters streamed upward, a trident to the sky, and I heard a black goddess command live. I'd seen as rice on banana leaves, the alphabet engraved on skull, and even though my mind is not steady as the hull of a ship, and the world, like a pack of thieves, conspires to take my life. Only a muslin sail in the wind, I will not behead myself. A self-sieved painfully through the mesh of this life, I live.